First off, a thanks to all of you that took to Twitter and tweeted your questions to add OTRS Central. Much appreciated. It gives me something to come on here and do a video about. It's time to answer your questions, so let's get started. The Owens chimes in first with a life question. Let's see what you got. I've been applying for jobs all over the place and nobody is hiring and I'm starting to give up. I'm 22 with no job and a little depressed. Some uplifting advice. So now you're 22 instead of 21. Well, I guess I missed the birthday, so happy birthday to you. As far as you're applying for jobs, but nobody is hiring. A uh, couple of things. Number one, do you have a resume? Number two, is that resume the drizzling shits? Fair question. Because in a lot of cases, unfortunately, in today's digital age, the only chance you have to make an impression is that application and is that resume. If you have very little job experience and or no college degree, you know, it seems like that's more important than anything nowadays is a stupid college degree, you have to figure out ways to set yourself up. You have to figure out ways to make yourself stand out. And you do whatever you need to do to do that. If you need to sit there and, you know, manufacture and create accomplishments and, you know, really focus on what seem like inconsequential skills or inconsequential achievements that actually to an employer could look very significant and very important, then that's what you need to do. Do you have a cover letter for that resume? Is that cover letter helping you stand out? What types of jobs are, are you applying for? How are you going about it? What type of skills do you bring to the table? Have you been getting interviews and not getting through the interviews because maybe you're not prepared well for the interviews you lack in interview skills? These are all things that I'm wondering here. It's not necessarily a thing of giving you uplifting advice other than telling you don't stop because it's not something to quit over. It's something that should drive you, challenge you, motivate you to do better. Uh, but I'll reach out to you and maybe I can provide you some help, maybe some assistance, um, get you directed at where you need to go to get some help in some key areas. Maybe I myself could provide you some help as well. Um, so I'll reach out to you, uh, the Owens, and let's see what we can get done for you. Uh, my JJ1279, can I get a round table with Solid Monster, Good Mic Work, and OTRS Central? That would be a lot of fun, I think. That would be interesting. Three guys, established, I guess you'd say, different types of personalities, different perspectives to a certain degree. Oh, I'd love to do a roundtable with those two guys. I think that would be an absolute freaking blast. Three older fans, too, so you get kind of that <laughs> jaded cynicism. Well, at least for me, I get the jaded cynicism. Uh, but I'd love to do it. I hope at some point in time that would happen. Corey underscore Warboyes. Which QB is going to be the biggest sleeper in this year's draft? Um, honestly, I don't know if there is a sleeper at this particular point in time. I still haven't finished evaluating all of the quarterback prospects. When I do, you can check that out at the Schleg Daddy TV channel here on YouTube. See, that's cross-promotion. If I had to say there might be one, it might be Garrett Grayson from Colorado State. Um, if there was another one... Maybe somebody like a Sean Mannion from Oregon State. I don't think it's Bryce Petty. Uh, I haven't seen a lot that I really loved out of Shane Carden from East Carolina, at least at this point in time. I'm not quite so sure why Blake Sims is being viewed as such a low-tier prospect, but I'm not sure that I'm ready to crown his ass as a mid-round type of gem either. So I'm not sure if this quarterback class has a sleeper. This quarterback class needed to be a whole lot better, honestly, than what it actually was. Matthew underscore Bizzle, any reason why Hulk Hogan didn't come out with the NWO on the Raw reunion and X-Pac did instead? Well, to be fair, X-Pac, X-Pac was one of the more original members of the NWO, and in terms of what they were doing with Hogan, they were already featuring him on the Legends panel. So that was just their way of having something for Hogan to do and finding a way to get the NWO on the air as well. Furthermore, with what they did with the NWO, were you really going to sit there and have Hogan take a back seat to the APA and the New Age Outlaws? I don't think so. So it, it worked for me just fine, and I thought how he was utilized was the right way to go. Um, Mr. Underscore Scoobs, do you think that me being 20, I'm old enough to have an appreciation for The Undertaker? Most certainly. While you might not have been able to live through 
all of his career and might not have experienced all of his career firsthand, you could go back and look and at least have some form of appreciation, some form of understanding, and most certainly some form of respect for all that he did and all that he meant to the company and the business and all that he accomplished. Most certainly. Most certainly. It's not one of these things where you have to always live it to have an appreciation for it. You might not have the same type of appreciation for it when you're looking back on it, but that doesn't mean that you can't have an appreciation nonetheless. Uh, Martin Hall 05, is Cesaro's entrance music the worst you've ever heard? Um, it's bad, but I gotta be honest, a lot of this entrance music over the past few years has been pretty bad. I mean, there's those occasional themes that work really well, um, but a lot of the other themes have been quite bad. I don't know if that's just Jim Johnston uh, dropping the ball a little bit, falling off his game, if that's just them going to more of the generic, almost like house music, it seems like, for the WWE. But there's a lot of bad themes. Yes, Cesaro's is bad, but he by no means is the only one. It's been kind of disappointing because for years, you could have a crappy wrestler, but a, a great entrance theme, and that would make a big difference. And now these guys aren't getting those great themes. Um, let me see here. Uh, Cyanide Rain. Why do I have a bad feeling that they will have Brian win the belt at WrestleMania 31 and then turn him heel? Uh, because you probably anticipate that he's going to turn heel at some point in time in 2015, as do I. Furthermore, it would be an ultimate F you to the fans. Well, you got where you wanted. You got Brian in this spot. Uh, now, eat shit and like the taste of it. And that would be so Vince. Uh, they want it. They're going to get it. He's going to turn heel. Oh, my God. Could you imagine? It would lead to a Seth Rollins babyface turn, probably. It'd be a lot of different things. Not saying that it wouldn't be the worst direction to go in. Uh, yeah, it'd be a pretty bad direction to go in at this particular point. Uh, let's see here. Carrot J for life. Carrot, Carrot J for life. Outstanding. <laughs> uh, 2003 Stephanie McMahon, 2000 Trish Stratus, and 2003 Molly Holly. There's a pureness and a chasteness to Molly Holly that begs for all three holes to be filled with babies. Um, I'd have to go with 2000 Trish Stratus, so I'm sorry. 2000 Trish Stratus. No offense to younger Stephanie uh, post boo job, but yeah, I gotta go with Trish. And frankly, in this particular category, Stephanie McMahon would finish third. Uh, let's see here. Uh, lip lock, motorboat boob, stink face, Bronco Buster, and all four of these with one, Natalia or Naomi? Well, Naomi. Why the fuck would I do that with Natalia? I'd literally be afraid if she tried to stink face me that she would just go doo-doos. I bet that bitch could boo-boo like a mother. She probably, like, fills the bowl with the swirl on the top, and it takes two flushes to clean it up behind her. Uh, let's see here. Demented Jeremy, if you were head of the creative in WWE, how would you tell Fitz to not mess with your stuff? Well, I would hope, if I was in a position where I could be in charge of that, that I would be able to position myself to have enough leverage to where the company had to have me enough, where I was able to write it into the contract that I had full and complete creative control, and that I answer to them based off of performance, not based off of what is written and what is booked. If I don't have that, then there's not much I could do because Vince is the guy in charge. I'd have to have some type of documentation, some type of guarantee of that. In the meantime, though, if you're talking about how would you tell Vince to not mess with your stuff, I guess you would kind of have to use reverse psychology. You'd have to suggestively suggest things. You would have to politely imply that his ideas are ridiculous. You would have to go roundabout ways. You'd have to get creative with it. And sometimes, frankly, you just have to be able to stand up to the man. He probably won't like it, probably hate you for it, but at the end of the day, he, he probably would want it. It's just a lot of people are afraid to do that nowadays and have courage, and I understand it. Uh, P. Drisk 60. With signing guys like The Rock, Undertaker, and HBK, I've given WCW an edge that could have won them the war. Well, as far as The Undertaker, to be honest, they had him. They did a lot of dumb things with him, and then he went to Vince, and he became The Undertaker. I'm not sure if The Rock would have ever fully gelled with the product down at WCW. HBK probably would have worked the best out of the three. But the problem was the problems with WCW were manyfold, both from a product and company standpoint, uh, the Turner Broadcasting standpoint. There's just a multitude of issues. Uh, let it go. 
let it go. Uh, let's see here. Gator Nation 2 Do you need two hands to count the number of clean jobs by John Cena? Uh, no, if you put in his entire body of work, oh, no, absolutely not. You don't need two hands. You need more than two hands. Um, in terms of while he's been at the top, like 100% clean, no interference, no BS, no excuses, you might only need one hand. Honestly, if we're really being honest, what we call clean, like 100% clean, no doubt about it, lock, stock, and barrel, he just fucking lost. There were no excuses. There was no injury to hide behind. There was no interference. There was no bullshit, no wishy-washy circumstances. Over the past five, six years in particular, you could probably count those occurrences on one hand. I'm thinking of Rock and Brock. I don't know, you can't even count Daniel Bryan because they sold his arm injury so much before and afterwards. I mean, but I guess if you wanted to count that clean, there was no interference, so that would be three. What else we got? I'm just saying. Uh, let's see here. Ahmed416, do you like the Mark Trestman hire by the Baltimore Ravens? Uh, <clears throat> He's definitely not an NFL head coach. I mean, his ceiling is offensive coordinator. Um... I'm not sold on the move because I'm not sure how Trestman's system fits Joe Flacco, if I'm being so honest. I don't know how that system fits Flacco's skill set and what he brings to the table. And that should be, you know, when you're bringing in an offensive coordinator to replace Kubiak, you should be focused on that. I'm not sure Trestman's system is the best fit for Flacco. At least with Kubiak, you can sit there and say that what he does in the running game, and he has a tremendous ability to get a lot out of the running game. He's done it everywhere he's ever been. In my opinion, he's one of the best run game coordinators we have ever seen and will ever see in the National Football League. Um, Trustman doesn't have that type of reputation. Trustman doesn't have that type of skill set. And like I said, based off of the system he likes to run and the things that he likes to have out of his quarterbacks, I'm not sold that Flacco is a great fit, honestly. I'm not saying it won't work. Um, it could very well work. I'm just not sold on it. Um, imputations. Is the reason Triple H doesn't have any sons because he puts over Stephanie every night in bed? You really think he's putting over his wife every night? You really, really think that Triple H is putting over his wife every single night? Do you really? That's funny. Uh, let's see here. Rampager 213. Uh, which two men would you like to see start this year's Royal Rumble match? Uh, Daniel Bryan would be one, and in terms of the other one, give it to somebody that needs to go, ah, fuck it, let the people jerk off to it, Daniel Bryan, Dolph Ziggler, fucking why not, it's okay, I mean, I'd be fine with that. Uh, Seeky for Life, do you think Bryan beating Lester is very Cena-like and that people have Bryan blinders on and can't see that? Uh, to a degree, yes. I think there are definitely Daniel Bryan blinders. I don't know if Daniel Bryan beating Brock Lesnar would be Cena-like, uh, because at least you could say with Daniel Bryan, you know, even with him going against a Lesnar, that anything can happen on any given night. You know, upsets happen in the sporting world, what have you. I think the better story is for Daniel Bryan to not beat Brock Lesnar if they were going to go with Bryan Lesnar at Mania, because they would have Seth Rollins cash in. What's really puzzling to me is now that they've made Lesnar this big-time babyface because they're dumb dicks, I don't even know how well the dynamics of Bryan versus Lesnar would work at WrestleMania 31, if I'm being honest. If anything, you're just setting that up to get even more heel heat on Seth Rollins if and when he cashes in and becomes a champion. And if that's the goal, so be it. But right now, it just doesn't seem like it makes any fucking sense that the guy that you had on end taker streak and smashed John Cena is now your top baby face. As I predicted months ago was exactly what was going to fucking happen. Ha ha ha. Told you so. Eat shit. So anyways, thanks to you guys for sending in your questions. I'll be back again in a day or two with another Q&A. Make sure you tune into this channel all week long for other content on OTRS Central, including my Rumble preview show my 2015 Royal Rumble review, and make sure you check out the Royal Rumble review series on this channel if you're looking for something to kill some time and get you ready for this year's Royal Rumble.